Okay, Shalom Chavra, we are in the Tanya. I told you guys before, Tanya, the Balatanya wrote this because Kabbalistically the word Tanya refers to a certain angel. It's an angel that's responsible to prevent you from learning deeper ideas of life. It's kind of a cool box, this is like a new thing, this plastic thing around. Tanya is the name of an angel that prevents you from uh, learning deeper concepts. And it makes a person say, oh, you know, there's nothing more to that relationship than what you see. There's nothing more to the Torah than just the basic things. There's nothing more to life than just, you know, what you see is what you get. It's an angel that makes a person see the world in Hebrew called shitchi, very shallow. And that makes for shallow relationships, shallow connection, shallow davening, shallow, shallow living, shallow breathing. And the Tanya was written to counteract shallowness, to fight that angel that makes a person and prevents them from looking deeper into life, deeper into relationships, deeper into the Torah, deeper into a soul. And the Tanya was written because you see, it just keeps taking you deeper and deeper and deeper into life itself to help people introduce themselves to the deeper dimension of life because life has many dimensions. And not just to see life, if, if you would ask most people, do you, do you see life more superficially or in a deeper way? So both, <laughs> we're amongst good friends here. Most people, it's like what you see is what you get. You go, you see, you see Times Square, you see the, the, the advertisements, the billboards, you know, what's life all about? Is there a world to come? Uh, don't, uh, we don't talk about that stuff. I'm just gonna de deal with what's in front of me. Life is kind of just what you see is what you get and you try to advance yourself in life and maybe be a good guy. And, and did you ever think about, you know, the world to come and mitzvahs and uh, I don't know. It's usually like one of these answers, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. It's like, uh, like why things like make me so uncomfortable? I don't know, isn't this a good thing to talk about? Uh, you being so deep, that's like deep stuff. Or that's, that's so this stuff. I don't know, you ever asked the question? Like maybe we should, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, repercussions if, if this stuff is real, if these deeper things are real. No, 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 let's not talk. So Tanya is a angel, is a force. Angels are forces, angel, angels aren't these, you know, these, they're not like physical, but an angel. Angels are spiritual energies and forces that create outcomes in the world and are messengers of Hashem. So there's an angel that Hashem created called Tanya, which makes life shallow. It makes me satisfied by just binging on Netflix and you know watching whatever and like eight hours of TikTok videos and I mean nothing, you know just watching, I don't know, some guy put a ball in a hoop. Yeah, that was great. Really? Like, you feel like you had a productive day? I don't know, like I, I, I watched all my games, I watched all my shows, I'm ahead in my, my, the season, the series, is, and the, the television, I'm ahead, okay? I'm, I'm doing well. I was seven seasons behind, I heard guys tell me this, I was seven seasons behind, I'm really behind, and like I really caught up, I had productive, you know, I had, I had a big long weekend, I just binged, I had got a few boxes of pizza, and, and I just, I'm, I'm ahead of the game now, I feel good about it, I'm ahead. I'm ready for the next season. I'm like, I'm even ahead. I'm ahead of where I thought I was going to be. I made a calculation. I'm ahead. And that's so shallow. Like, well, so that force called Tanya makes our life shallow. And the Tanya, because everything in this world is, has two sides, the side of holiness and the side of impurity. So the Tanya was written to make life deeper. To exactly counteract that force that makes me just see the world in a shallow way and see my wife in a shallow way, and, which, which is horrible. And see my friends in a shallow way. And, and the Tanya helps me to see my wife in a deep way, in a beautiful way, in a profound way. And not just as a person that I see with my two eyes, but as a, as a soul that I can make a relationship with, an infinite soul. And makes me see the Torah not as just a superficial guidebook of just do this and don't do that, but the very soul of Hashem put into this 
into the Torah that I can access, I can have a warm relationship with. So the Tanya is written to deepen our life. Okay? So we're speaking about a part of the Tanya where we explain the entire soul of humanity came into being similar to the analogy of the way that a, a man gives the seed and that seed becomes a child and every single thing inside the child was already there in the original seed. Just the, the mother had to unwind and, and reveal what was hiding in that seed, but everything was already there in the original conception. And so too, all the souls of Klal Yisrael, of humanity were given, specifically we're speaking about the godly soul, and that soul is like a giant body. This is all conceptual, it's not physical, like a giant body from the beginning of time to the end of time. And every stage in humanity has the energy of the head. And as you go down, you have more the energy of the arms and the heart. And eventually now we're at us, the ikvisid, the Mashiach, the heels, the, the footsteps of Mashiach, which means the heels of this soul. But in every generation, you have the head of the head and the head of the arms and the head of the bice, the, the pecs and the head of the heart and the head, and then the heart of the heart and then the feet of the heart, etc. And now we are in the end, we have at the heel of the foot. So we have the head of the heel and we have the heart of the heel and we have... And we explained also that just like a child, where does the life force of the child come from? A regular baby we're talking about now. Where's it? From the head. That's where the, that's where the action is. You and I, the action is in the head. That's where everything is pumping. The vibes are shooting forth. The neurological system is, 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 is the headquarters in the head. And that's sending messages and sending life force to my whole body. Now, let's use that as another analogy. If the head is the main headquarters, is like command center of energy, of life force for our bodies, let's go back to the nimsho of the great soul of humanity. What did we say was the head of this great soul? Adam. So, well, Adam, yes, but in every generation, is always going to be the righteous, the tzaddikin. So now, this brings us all the way back to us, which is, let's say we're at the feet, which we are. Now you guys are all big people. You're probably the head of the feet. You're probably the big tzaddikim. And even the head of the feet though, where does the feet need to stay connected to if it wants to be alive and have the life force flowing into it? Where do the feet need to be connected to? The head, which means what? You have to learn from Sadiqim. That's right. You have to learn from Sadiqim, not only from the past, even in every generation, which means it, me being the feet, because we're at the end of days, our souls are numb in many ways. We have a hard time feeling. In the times, like we mentioned, of the, of the temple and the Beis Hamikdash and going back, back to the patriarchs and the matriarchs, they felt more. There, were, there was more life force coursing through them because they were the head. Us at the end of days being the feet, how do we pump ourselves up? How do we generate that energy of being connected through the head? Let me give a funny example. If I'm a foot, I'm a toe, a little baby toe. So I'm thinking to myself, look at me, I'm my own little baby toe. Yeah, I got my own life here. I got, you know, seven figures in the bag. Got a good job. Got a yacht. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. And, and someone comes to me and says, you think you're doing okay, but you, you cut off. I said, and then they say to you, are you connected to any, to any tzaddikim? Are you connected to learning Torah from the great sages of every generation. Nah, the rab, I'm not into them. No, no, no. They say, bro, that's like a baby toe that's choosing to neglect the neurological life force coming out of the brain. You know, you're not going to live too long. It's going to become necrotic, right? The toe can't say, I don't need the head. Uh, bad move. You know, that's, that's like a person, God forbid, ties a, a rubber band very strong onto a limb it can start to stop the flow of getting to that limb. What happens? We don't want to say, but 
it has to be cut off because it essentially is killing the limb. So that is a physical example to understand a spiritual concept. So at the end of days, the feet, which are very disconnected, that's the furthest place from the head. If the feet themselves don't wake up and say, I want a connection with the head. And they say the opposite. They say, ah, we don't need the head. You know, we don't need the sages. What are they doing? They're, it's like they're cutting off that limb. They're, they just stop the blood flow and the life force coming from, from the, the, the central operating uh, uh, command center. Why would you do that? It's not a good idea. However, a person that says, I want to be connected to the sages in every generation. I want to be connected to the tzaddikim. I want to be connected to the life force, the head of, 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 of guidance and direction from the righteous of every generation. So that toe is going to be fired up. He's going to work properly. He's going to be, it's going to be, there's going to be a, a flow of energy going to him. Okay? This is all to teach us the necessity of learning from and connecting to tzaddikim. Connecting to righteous people. The necessity. The necessity. And a person who thinks that they can pull it off without having a relationship to, to the righteous, it's not a good... I'm, please, I'm, I'm begging you to reconsider. I'm begging you to think about re-establishing, or if you've never established, a real connection to sages, to, to real tzaddikim, to big people. And I'm big. The heads of the generation, who are the righteous ones, if you just would spend time with them, you would see these people are totally given over to humanity, they're given over to the tire, they're given over to, to, to honest, righteous values. I had the, the distinct privilege of sitting with Shmuel Kamenetsky, Shlita, I should live long and be well. He's almost 100 years old. This summer I was in Philly with my wife and family, and so sweet. I sat down with them. We were talking, asked them a few questions, and I felt so happy. First of all, he's one of the biggest rabbis in the world. I felt I was plugged into life. He's one of the heads of the generation. I was literally plugged in. Just looking at him, I saw everything right about a human being. Everything beautiful, everything good about a human being, everything noble and honest and and. and with scholarly and, and gentle and kind and, and pure and good. The righteous are people that you look to and you see, this is good. They don't waver on their values. They're not fickle. Like they, they, they'll just say whatever's going to please the, you know, the, the voters. They do whatever the Torah says, given over, literally. I was just spending time with them. I was so happy. I was, when I left this house, I was so happy. I was like driving through Philly. Like, I kind of got, got, got lost, ended up just, I didn't even know where. I just saw this. Come on. I don't know where I am. I'm lost in Philly. I'm just so happy. I went to Rav Shmuel. I was so happy. When you connect to big tzaddikim, it's exactly that feeling. Is that It's like all of a sudden the elastic band got taken off your baby toe and the energy is just flowing. So the way that you can bring energy into your life a major thing, and we see this a lot in Hasidus, is being connected to greatness. Even rationally, it helps you because you see something very great, and you yourself get pumped up. It's essential, essential. Bringing this back into the, the institution of our culture is being connected to great people, honest, upright people. We're talking about literally sage-like human beings that is super consistent, super good. And they, they're, they're, not, they're not wavering. They're not, these are so hardcore, super amazing. I'm using very funny words to describe the sages, individuals. Okay, that's all written inside the Tanya. Look at three lines from the bottom of 12. Ki yinikis v'chiyas nefesh ruch neshama. Now we can understand these words with more clarity and more vibrancy. Shel amea aretz. The life force, literally, for the basic people that are the bottom of the feet, and we're as a generation the bottom of the feet. It comes from connecting to the tzaddikim, connecting to the biggest people of that generation. 
Ubezeh, next page, Zion, Yuvan, Maimer, Chazal. And now we can understand what the sages said, a very cryptic statement in the Gemara. Al Pasuk Uladov Kaboy. The Torah says you should cleave to Hashem. Like, it's nothing physical, obviously, because God's not physical. So, what does it mean to cleave to Hashem? It means spiritually to attach yourself to Hashem, to cleave as if. You know, you feel close and you cleave, you hug somebody, you embrace somebody in an intimate, beautiful way. You're, you feel close. So you want to do that to Hashem, to cleave, to, to draw close to Hashem. Nothing physical again, this is an experience, a feeling of closeness to Hashem. The only problem is, you know what the Gemara says? Cleave to Hashem, but Hashem is an all-consuming fire. I want to hug Hashem. Ah! <laughs> you know, be careful. Be careful. It's, uh, you know, it's, Hashem is real. Hashem is... Don't worry, He's also gentle. He has... But Hashem is real. So the Gemara says, Don't worry. Shekol hadovak betalmud chacham. If you connect to the tzaddikim, the greatest of the generation, ma'la kosev, it's like... It's like you connected to Hashem. Now, through connecting to the sages, the real tzaddikim, they themselves connect in their essence. Etc. Meaning, in the same way that the child, let's explain this on the outside, same way that the child, by him connecting, i.e., his baby toe wants life force, it has to connect up to the life force of the head. And the life force of the head, we said what? Is intimately connected to the life force of the father, because the father created the child through the life force of his mind. Okay, so by connecting up to the, the head of the child connects you directly up to the head of the father. Now, conceptually, this big soul we keep talking about of all of the soul of humanity, the godly soul, when the lowest, the baby toe, the toenail, connects itself spiritually up to the mind where all the action is, what happens? He's connected to the life force. But the tzaddikim, who are the head, they are coming right from the head of Hashem. Even though the whole child was created in the mind of Hashem, like we explained. And Hashem and Himself and His thoughts are all one. But when the child, the toe, i.e. the low souls, the ones that don't feel that much, in our end of days story, when they connect to the mind, the mind which we said is the tzaddikim, the righteous, they hold on to that life force. So the life force in the mind is coming right of the life force in the mind of the Father, Hashem. And therefore, that's what the Gemara means. Through connecting to the tzaddikim, the righteous, who are the mind of the Son, the mind of this big soul, of humanity, of the godly soul, through connecting to that mind, you directly are getting the life force from the Father, which is Hashem, which means you're intimately connecting to Hashem. Doesn't mean that the tzaddik is God, has to show. The tzaddik is just the mind of the sun where the, where the life force is at. So by going in that direction, you're accessing the life force of Hashem. It's all to get back to Hashem, my friends. It's all about Hashem. Just the tzaddik is where the revelation is most. That's where the light is at. And therefore, we see that by the Hasidim, there was a big focus on connecting to the righteous, connecting to the tzaddikim. That it shouldn't be that, yeah, I just do my thing, and like, if I have a question about if a milk spoon falls into a cholent, I'll call the rabbi, and that that's my relationship to, the, there's a whole new thing happening here where you start to connect. You go to see your shmuel, you just, you just sit with him. You appreciate, you read the books of the tzaddikim. You try to have a relationship. You try to have, I feel, there's a certain tzaddik lull of a Rebbe. So, he, 
my, my wife and I, we lived in the old city for a number of years and he has a cola right beside us. So he also helped me with, he did a certain miraculous thing. Uh, it's, it's beyond, beyond, he helped with a certain thing. And I always felt a certain connection. And so now we'll speak on usually Rosh Chodesh, he'll call just to check in. He lives in Burr Park. And I feel like amazing just that I get to speak, that I call sometimes if I have questions. You, there's a certain energy that is unbelievable when you speak to big, big people, big people, that it pumps you up. And it's like this, you're like plugged into the source because they're plugged into the source all the time. The one thing you notice about Sadiqim, like they don't take days off from God. You spend time with Sadiqim, they're always like in the God zone. Not in a weird way, they're just totally lit up with Hashem all the time. Because the mind, does the mind kind of, when a person's mind, the neurological system in the mind is always pumping, moving, it is action in the mind. The Sadiqim, that's where the action is at. So when you're plugging into that action, we're, and the action of the son is directly connected to the action of the, the father's mind, which is Hashem. You feel plugged in. So that's why something's just going. And being around the tzaddik, it's very uplifting. So I want from today, in summary, just people to understand and appreciate the greatness in connecting to sages, including modern day sages. And making it a first, an effort to start to think to yourself out of the Rosh Shiva, just connecting to the Rosh Shiva. The Brooklyn is, is like... You feel there's something big here. And to make a relationship to the best that you can, as, as personal as you can. Not to think, oh, they're so big, you know, like they've got bodyguards. No, 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 it's not like that. It's, it's not, you know, rabbis are not like celebrities, it's not Hollywood here. That, you know, you could never come and see us and like, no, no, this is, you can, you can walk right up. You can have a conversation. If Shmuel says, come sit down, let's, let's talk. You, it's right there, it's, it's direct. It's full access. You're able to make connections and relationships. And it's very, very important to do that. To, of course, learn Torah from them. But even little things like you, to, to serve in different ways, to help, to be part. And to sometimes just watching Rosh Shmuel speak to his wife is such, so gentle and so beautiful. You're like, oh my goodness, this is like, this is beautiful. This is good. You learn about life. You see it because you're up in the head where all of the, the, the life force, the action of what life is all about is, is shining in all of its brilliance. So that's the main takeaway for today is think to yourself, how can I stay connected to the sages of every generation, really connect myself in a real, real way, make that chibur, and then I'm gonna be in this brilliant experience and I'm gonna see and directly be connecting myself to the mind of the Father, which is Hashem, we should be zaykhul to, to this Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day, dear Hebron.